Do you want to know why they call me Cali the Don? They call me the Don because I run the market. I didn't make it. They also call me the Don because I know about the cars that you should buy before it skyrockets in price. And I'm always looking out for the little man. So if I tell you this information, I only have one request. You save it for everybody that wants to buy cards. Unless you want to figure out how Squamatas really do it. What's going on with y'all, big dog? And it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope that your day <laughs> phenomenal. But if it isn't, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. YCS Las Vegas was a complete eye-opener. And if you was out there with your boy Cali getting it out of the mud, then you'll be hearing about some murmurs from some cards that players have been looking at to be able to counter some of the top decks. With the best decks already being established in my last top five meta decks video, you can go ahead and check it out. Essentially, the big three are support me on OnlyFans and Cash App so I can finally afford this deck. By the way, I don't got none of those, but you could always join Patreon. They got this information a little earlier. The theater kids that got rejected by that one girl in high school and became creepy in college. And the rainbow lesbians with no actual color being seen as the most powerful Yu-Gi-Oh decks in the format, players have actually been conspiring on a few cards that could see potential inside of the format, and of course, their price will definitely go up if they are being played significantly. Of course, you should do your own research about these particular cards, but these are some cards that I am choosing to buy before they skyrocket in price! <laughs> But right now, staying on topic, players have been looking for ways to these particular decks, and they found out some really interesting cards that you should be looking into. One of them is actually an anime fan favorite, so I think even if it doesn't necessarily work against Cash Tira, it can actually be a card that will skyrocket in price because of retro formats and because it's an iconic Yu-Gi-Oh card. Crush Card Virus is a card that has three different erratas, and I wish it had the other two because it would have been insane. My guy, infecting your opponent's entire deck. <laughs> Holy shit, that would have been dope. Destroying monsters over 1,500 attack for three turns? Can I at least have that errata? No, I got this. In case you didn't know, Crush Card Virus did receive an errata in the TCG, and its new effect requires you to tribute a dark monster under 1,000 attack just like the original, and still does destroy monsters over 1,500 attack from your opponent's hand and field. My guy, yo! Wait, time out. Hold on. I want you to do me a favor, right? I want you to look at the Cash Tira deck and find all of the monsters under 1500 attack. There's only two. There's only two. Crush Card Virus on paper looks like an insane Yu Gi Oh card against the Cash Tira strategy, being able to merc their entire board as well as their hand. And all you have to do is send off a dark monster with a thousand or less attack. That is super easy for some decks to use. But again, I really like Crush Card as a card that you should pick up because over time, I think that it's going to be going up in price no matter what. Despite it having so many printings, I think the higher end ones are actually ones to go after. I mean, if you can afford the $50,000 ultra rare crush card, I'm not telling you not to buy it, but let, let your homie hold a couple Gs. Ironically enough, Kaiba just must hate Cash Tira because a card that's actually seeing play right now and is completely insane against the Cash Tira strategy is Enemy Controller. Now, Enemy Controller has two great effects. The first one allows you to be able to switch battle positions of your opponent's monsters, kind of like how your girl be switching uh, positions out there. <laughs> 
Look, man, I ain't want to tell you, but with Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse, and enemy controller out there, yeah, she be switching more positions, big dog. You might want to consider your options. And then the second one allows you to tribute a monster to take control of an opponent's mom. That is actually incredible. Enemy controller is one of the very few quick play cards that allow you to take control of your opponent's monster. And as we know, we in the take yo bitch format, and that's why she been switching so many positions. Being able to use this card to tribute off a Nightmare Corruptor, Ibu, Lava Golem, or Wing Dragon Ross Fear Boat that your opponent gave you to attempt to take their Arise Heart and make your own Arise Heart or Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus is just peak Yu-Gi-Oh in the card game. And seeing that it also can save you from losing the game by switching a monster that declared an attack to defense, this is a peak Yu-Gi-Oh card right now. Secret and ultra rare copies of Enemy Controller are already on Arise, but I don't think it's a bad idea to pick up this versatile card as it is also another card that was good in alternative formats as well. And lastly, to be able to combat Cash Terra and also just so happens to be pretty good against Branded right now is Contact C, allowing you to be able to special summon it to your opponent's side of the field when they normally special summon, and then your opponent can't touch the extra deck unless they're using this card as a material as well. My guy, do you see any, uh, rank six monsters that Cash Terra can make? No? Branded, I don't know. They just lost in the sauce with this card. They could easily get rid of it, but they don't play any of them. Contact C can also be searched through Retaliating C, which can also search Sneaky C, which is a terribly powerful Yu-Gi-Oh card in the entire meta. And no, this is not Copium. Mm -mm. Nope, not Copium at all. That card's, it's its doing things. It, it can do things. It's, it's, um, it's not good, is it? Hey, at least somebody is brave enough to have more C's than a Crypt Gang without Maxi in their deck, huh? You just a hater. Now, unfortunately, equality means that these hands can be for everyone, especially for the Labyrinth strategy, because I'm about to drop some serious equality on how to beat the deck, and these cards are really powerful against them. You probably should consider picking them up. An extremely good card against the Labyrinth strategy is Anti-Magic Arrows, which states at the start of the battle phase and for the rest of the turn, neither player can activate spell and trap cards, and your opponent can't use spell and trap cards in response to this. God damn, I didn't killed off my babies like what Anakin did. This card is ridiculously powerful against Labyrinth because they still get to hear battle phase. And they get all of the shocks of fearing evenly match only for you to slam down this card and they can't do anything in response, allowing you to build your board in main phase two, break whatever they have and then play forward. This card is one of the most dangerously powerful cards to be used against them. And another amazing card is Danko Seca. Danko Seca is extraordinary right now. Not only is it good against Labyrinth, it's also good against Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse, Forbidden Lance, and Forbidden Jealous, cards that are really popular against Cash Terra and for Cash Terra. As long as you don't need your normal summon, you can literally shut down a player and continue on with your game. And fortunately enough, right about now, at the time of making these videos, both of these cards are about two dollars each it is a hundred percent some cards that you should have in your arsenal as they're very powerful and versatile cards when the time comes around to be able to play them i'm sorry mommy milkers i didn't mean to get you like that but uh and now that I killed off my babies, kind of like how my ex-girlfriend did at that party, I have no problems with being able to tell you that buying Dimensional Barrier and Anti-Spell Fragrance are excellent pickups against the Branded strategy. These two cards were already succinctly accessible against Branded in the past. It's no reason to think that they won't be as powerful. The good thing about them is that they have multiple prints, but the high-end version, as in the secret first versions of Dimensional Barrier from Invasion Vengeance, as well as Anti-Spell Fragrance Collector's Rare, players are already starting to I kind of like how they eyed my ex-girlfriend when she was killing all of those babies. Man, if them kids was a person, it definitely was her. Hey guys, Editor Cali, and upon making this video, I actually thought of some insane cards that are going to skyrocket in price because of Structure Deck Beware Trap Tricks. Structure Deck Beware Trap Tricks is actually starting to seem as a really powerful Yu-Gi-Oh deck, and it's starting to make sense why Photon Hypernova had all of that plant insect support. But some cards that I think you genuinely should be looking at is the Therion package. Now, I did tell you guys to buy the Therion package a long time ago when it was significantly cheaper, but Therion's Lily Brea is an excellent bridge point for the Trap Trick strategy to be able to get into Therion King Regulus. All you have to do is pretty much put plant monsters in your graveyard, which Trap Tricks can do extremely well. Who would have guessed being a half plant, half insect strategy, kind of like how your ex-girlfriend is half me and half her would be that easy. 
Now the next card I do think is somewhat risky because it could be getting a reprint in Maze of Memories, but Aroma Seraphie Jasmine is actually a critical point for the Trap Trick strategy, moving itself from just a Trap Trick deck to be able to play Trap Trick Therions with ease, or also linking the Sun Avalon and the Rika strategy. Like I said in my meta tier list, the Trap Trick strategy can actually be what plants need to be able to breed a more control variant to be able to slow down some of the deck's oppositions, like Nibiru and Ash Blossom, and also create a totally different board. <laughs> said breed. With that being said, another excellent point for Trap Tricks into the Rika cards is Rika Strena because it is a rank 4 monster with only one ultra rare printing and is very easy to get to because you now play Trap Tricks. Basically what I'm saying big dog is that plant support is 100% being looked at and if this is something that you really want to get into then maybe you should buy it before it's too late. And lastly, a card that doesn't necessarily have a ton of metal relevance right now, but it's a card that I am peeping my game on is Gravekeeper's Inscription. Gravekeeper's Inscription actually has some really powerful effects, even though it's a little too late. Konami, why didn't you release this card earlier when Deal Limits were killing us? No hate though, better late than never, right? Inscription is really good because it prevents activating, banishing, or special summoning from the graveyard. It can be extremely good against a deck that is incredibly reliant on those like Tier Lament. But overall, the reason why I'm telling you guys to pick this card up is because it's at its lowest price point. I don't see it really going lower than $9 a copy. And that is all that I have for cards that you should buy before they skyrocket in price. Let me know down below in the comment section if there are some other cards that you think that I missed. What are some secret cards that you've been looking at that you think are powerful? As always, if you want to see more amazing Cali Effect content, go ahead and check out these videos as I'll catch you on the next one.